This video summarizes my first installation of a remote environmental monitor for detecting flows in a wash frequently impacted by sanitary sewer overflows. When flows are detected, an interrupt pin on the remote environmental monitor triggers a satellite telemetry algorithm that posts data to the Internet of Things, which in turn notifies me of conditions via text message on my phone. In this video, I go over lessons learned associated with the installation and also summarize challenges encountered in using interrupt pins to trigger telemetry algorithms. All right, folks, um, I'm here at a site that suffers quite frequently from sanitary sewer overflows. So we're going to set up one of these remote environmental monitors in this little wash where everything accumulates. Um, I made a few mistakes in, uh, uh, with respect to this installation. For one, I didn't scope out this area before coming out here, and I didn't have enough conduit and wiring to actually put that T-post outside of the wash on the bank and then drop the sensor into the wash with the second T-post. So I wasn't expecting to find this entrenched channel here. So that's something that I just need to make a note of for next time. Uh, the other issue I'm dealing with is the um, my little water sensor has a little too much height on the uh, PVC, which required me to um, dig down quite a ways to get about six inch of uh, clearance relative to the thalweg of this channel. So uh, maybe make those a little bit shorter next time so I don't have to dig so much. And then the last problem I'm having is with respect to these zip ties and the way I oriented this zip, this, uh, this T-post. So I probably should have put this on the other side uh, so that the remote environmental monitor can face upstream towards flow so that uh, people can see what it is. I'm going to put a label on it. Uh, if I have it facing the other way, it looks kind of suspicious. It, it might... Uh, gender some curiosity for folks to come out here and mess with it. So uh, what I'm doing in the interim is I'm just putting these zip ties here so that um, my other zip ties can tie into this and hopefully keep it anchored nice and high. So, and there's one channel that suffers from SSOs and here's the other one. And they come together right here. Okay, so the uh, REM is uh, zip tied to this post. I've got the conduit zip tied all up and down that post as well, and I'm about to plug in the battery and see if this thing will transmit. Okay, and you can see that little red light on the uh, solar LiPo charger. That indicates that there's a good connection between the solar panel and the LiPo charger. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the um, Arduino rock block setup and uh, see if this thing transmits. Hard doing this one-handed. Okay, so the Arduino is blinking, which means, and we do have connection. And yes, the uh, the display was uh, was uh, installed upside down on this one, so I've already made a note that that needs to be uh, fixed in our standard operating procedure. So it's in the loop. It's going to try to uh, talk to the rock block. Uh, and it takes a second because it's got to charge that um, 5 volt capacitor, so I give it a little bit of time. That's what that this takes a minute message is all about. And hopefully, in a few seconds, uh, we'll start to see number 13 LED come on. There it is, indicating that the rock block's been turned on. So I got enough power to that super cap to. Um, uh, to get the rock block turned on. Sorry, I'm a little out of breath from digging. It's going to try to send a channel update. Message sent. Okay. So now I'm going to do a test with some water. So I'm going to pause here a second. Okay, I'm back over at the uh, REM. And this time I've got a glass of water, which should trigger interrupt pin 3 on the Arduino and get the... Uh, um, get the rock block to send a message out to my cell phone immediately. Let's see if it works. So, there you can see my glass of water. There's my sensor. Let's get it wet. Uh. 
Okay. It doesn't look like it triggered it. So it could be that the uh, sensor uh, in the uh, PVC right there, um, there's a loose connection in there possibly. So uh, one way I can tell is there's a little red LED on the, uh, on the sensor that burns bright when it's connected. I'm also gonna make sure that my uh, power pin is set up properly up here. So I am currently running that sensor. The power's coming through that little white cable to the five volt rail, which is gonna be right there. It's actually the one in the back. So there's, uh, the connection seems to be good. Okay, so I hooked up my multimeter to see if I could figure out what is going on here. And uh, what I did was I took the, the, uh, the cable that was attached to the interrupt pin, which is this little brown cable, and I hooked it up to my multimeter. And then I have the, uh, the ground hooked up to the ground of my, uh, of my breadboard, my little proto board there. And this is what I discovered when I do a test on this. Let's see if I can get the voltage in the... I don't know if you can see the voltage there, but I'll just read it off to you. When I get this wet, the voltage does rise as it's supposed to, but I'm only getting about 1.2 volts. And I'll see if I can... There, you can see that now. Uh, 1.188, 1.2. I need three volts to trigger that interrupt pin. So I've already done that manually. I just I just set the interrupt pin on the five volt rail and it did send a message. So what that's telling me is that this sensor, there's something wrong with the sensor. Uh, maybe the uh, wiring got damaged and it's not making a good connection during installation. I'm not exactly sure. So what I'm gonna do is take head back home, rebuild the sensor, test it at home, and uh, bring it back out here, bring back a new sensor, set it up and uh, get this thing working properly. So. so just a quick note here, I started doing a little research on interrupt pins and logic levels and confirmed that three volts is what I need as an ideal voltage to trigger an interrupt pin on a five volt system. Anything less puts me in a floating zone, which doesn't guarantee that my pin will be triggered at least when working off of a five volt microcontroller. One option is to replace that five volt microcontroller with one that runs on three volts. This lowers the threshold for triggering the interrupt and gives me an easy fix until I can rebuild or replace this REM and its sensor. So it'd just be a matter of swapping out the five volt pro trinket with a three volt pro trinket, thus improving the chance of triggering the interrupt until I can replace the whole system. As a side note, I did test these various cheap sensors available on eBay on my bench to see what kind of signal response I can get when powered directly off a 3.7 volt LiPo battery. Uh, the water level sensors give me about 2.4 volts when fully immersed, sufficient to safely trigger the interrupt on a 3 volt trinket, but not quite enough to guarantee triggering an interrupt on a 5 volt trinket. I get similar results for this sensor. And for this one, if I use it directly with a pull-down resistor on pin 3. In this context, I'm better off using the 3-volt Pro Trinket for my field deployments for the purpose of increasing the probability that uh, flow using these cheap sensors will trigger my interrupt pin. So the big takeaway from this experience is uh, I learned that you really need to pay attention to logic level thresholds for the microcontroller you're working with if you intend on using sensors to trigger interrupt pins. I just assumed a wet sensor would trigger my interrupt pin and modem, but this may not always be the case, especially if there's some signal loss due to a poor connection, as I witnessed in my field deployment, or if the sensor just doesn't yield a voltage needed to trip your interrupt pin even when it's running perfectly. I have yet to return to the field to repair this setup, but I did recently order one of these capacitive soil moisture sensors to use as an analog for flow detection. I'm still waiting for it to come in and may use it as a replacement for my deployed field sensor since the voltage output is reported to be a little better. 
or I might just replace the 5 volt microcontroller with one that runs 3 volts uh, until this new sensor comes in. Keep in mind that I'm not an electrical engineer, so I'm still on a steep learning curve regarding all this. If you have any ideas on how to improve the overall setup, please don't hesitate to comment below. Thanks for watching and subscribe for updates.